if you're sitting in front of a computer for most of the day, then most of the work that you're doing is, is cognitive work, right? It used to be a uh, hundred or so years ago, the, the, this study of, of expertise mainly focused on manual trades like bricklayers, right? Brick, bricklayers were really, really skilled how they're grabbing bricks and putting the mortar on, setting them and, and lining them up. And so uh, there were original studies of expertise that focused on that. They got early cameras, filmed people, slowed it down, look at how long it was taking them to, to grab a brick, apply stuff. And they were kind of efficiency experts. They were trying to make the whole process more efficient, mm -hmm. right? If we can put the bricks here closer to the bricklayer rather than a step away, then they'll be able to lay them more, lay them more quickly and we'll be able to get more bricks laid per hour and we'll be, you know, everything was kind of, you know, industrial, was after the industrial revolution, I guess, but, but in that kind of vein, how can we make things more efficient? But at some stage in the 20th century, a, a lot of work transitioned from becoming, from being very manual to starting to be more cognitive. Mm. And so then people got interested in, well, what's happening cognitively inside people's heads that let them do tasks really well? maybe faster than others more accurately than others and you know the probably the biggest area of expertise research or at least in the beginning is chess and i i'm kind of embarrassed i've never played chess i don't know how to play chess put a chess board in front of me not a clue. Would not know a pawn from a rook, from a king, from no a queen. One sat, do you want me to teach you how to play chess? Someone one you, day you, has you, to teach I, you. I will, because, and you'll probably even have a chance against me in your first game because I know the rules, but I'm, 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 I'm really no expert. I think one of the reasons that I've kind of resisted <laughs> is because I'm scared what will happen if I start learning. I think it will take over my life. Not, <laughs> not that I'll be very good. But I'll, but I'll want oh, to boy. get better. You're and, in trouble, Joel. The dam is breaking. The Queen's Gambit is so popular yeah, on Netflix now. It. Everyone's getting all excited about every chess thing. There's going to be a lot of people getting chess boards for Christmas yeah. this year, and I have a feeling you're going to be one of them. Oh, I don't know. You're in trouble. I, I, I did watch... 2021 <laughs> is going to be your 2020. <laughs> I, I did watch Queen's Gambit, and, you know, I had no idea what was happening with all, you know, <laughs> with with any of the pieces. No one knew any um, of those moves. But but I've I've read a bit about you know chess research and that that was a really nice. It's a really nice domain in which to look at expertise because even though there's a lot of moves, mm -hmm. there are rules and things are constrained, and you can ask people to predict someone's next move and. There's, there's, there's been just a lot of research about cognitive performance, memory, things like that uh, related to, to chess. And so, I don't know, in, in some way, I'm trying to apply some of that stuff, that some of that kind of approach to, to law enforcement, because I think that police officers deserve to have really good training. And I think society at large would want them to have really good training. And it's yeah. not its not that they they don't get good training. Um, I'm sure that there's some places that give excellent training, but there's it's very diverse, the training, because police uh, or law enforcement is so, it's organized on such a local level here in the United States. There's yeah. very many you can have lots of places teaching in different ways. And yes, there's there's some kind of state standards in, in most states, but there's also a lot of leeway in what, what happens within those standards. Mm. And, you know, police trainers have a really tough job. Mm. They've got to they've got to teach people to be kind of jacks of all trades. So instead of you got you got these human factors people going and studying people putting a brick down and mortar and each day they're getting slightly better and a little more efficient and keeping the bucket 
to the left side instead and the and they're getting more bricks down faster and it's holding better and the quality is improving as quantity is also increasing and that and and that little uh, uh zeroing in on how you make the fastest best little widget is a very different thing then making considerations like, okay, we got a fire here. Where's the fire hydrant? Do we need a helicopter to dump this and that exactly. on it? Do we have, uh, uh, do we, uh, you know, uh, uh, clear cut ahead of time? Uh, there's, there's, there's just, uh, there's just a lot more. You're going into a new environment and new situation and, each time. Yeah, and those environments, right? Like, you know, you used the the bricklaying example that that I raised. So that's a, a relatively stable environment right it's 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 pretty routine right yes you might be working on a different building but you're you're laying bricks and that kind of thing doesn't doesn't change very much whereas when we are talking so much smack about brick i know right now i think we better, I, better watch out or we're gonna get a, a brick a, through, a, the, a a brick through, through the window through the window with a note you think this is easy Ha, 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 ha.